Tonight's leaping Leroy Loggins is in devastating form and should prove to be a real problem for the Coburg team. But Coburg is quickly emerging as a finals prospect and will certainly be no pushover in tonight's game. Their star player, US centre Jim Foster, is dangerous and will need to be marked very closely if Brisbane is to take out the match. We now take you to the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Your commentators are Bill Palmer and Gary Fleet. It's going to be a great game of basketball. The refs are out on the court already. There's Larry Thenstock. He'll have a point to prove tonight. Uh, Rumour has it that uh, down south Jim Foster was responsible for a comment that the only thing big about Larry Sandstock was his ears. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see. They haven't actually matched up. Uh, Coburg, of course, was up for a preseason game, lost, I think, by a point. And Jim Foster got 40 in that game. He's the man in there with the headband taking the, uh, just uh, to your screen there, to the left of your screen, number 14. And Willie Simons, the one with the gogs, he's a big man in the play, too. And certainly he even dwarfed John Dorge, which is going big. You can see why they say he looks like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, he's a left-hander too, Gary, which makes it very, very handy. He's a sweet shooter from about 15 feet, has an excellent hook shot, and uh, he'll cause trouble. There's Foster working on Sinstock, and he's on the board, and uh, Larry, don't show those ears yet. Carl Bruton brings it down for the Brisbane Bullets. It's outside to Sinstock. Top to Bruton again. Interesting matchup. Uh, Wayne Carroll, who's their noted defensive specialist, picking up Leroy Loggins. We'll want to watch that matchup tonight. He's been hot for a couple of weeks now. It's so hot, in fact, that the fire engines have only just left Orkin flower. The rings were sizzling. Ron Radliff almost with the intercept there, but enough to upset the play. Well, that, with starting with the two small guards, the bullets, they're going to be putting a lot of pressure, particularly on number seven, David Graham, challenging his ball handling skills. And that was an error by Wayne Carroll and Brisbane into attack. Straight to Leroy Loggins. Who lays it up underneath. That was a great pass from Ron Radliff. He looked up the court. He saw that Loggins had a step and a half on the opposition and just looped it into him and two points. Easy for Leroy. But then that doesn't make it easy at the other end either. The ball is all over the place and Loggins comes away with the ball. Outside to Cal Bruton. Cal puts up the outside shot. And he's just carrying on where he was where he left off midweek. Bullets picking up in some full court defense. That was a terrible impound pass by Bruce Hulkin, setting up Sinskaz's drive to the basket, but uh, Foster clears number 44. And the Bullets look a lot uh, charged earlier than they have. We've seen them play uh, four games at home where they've started slowly. They've certainly started in full gear tonight. Bruce Hulkin with the miss. Simmons, and he can do that. And it's going to be a tough battle for John Dorge or whoever else picks up the big uh, Lank Yank uh, Simmons. Well, 6'10", 6'11", he's a big guy. And he's a, he's a great player. He really works hard. You can see he was called with a foul there, leaning over John Dorge's shoulder. But he really does work hard. He's got a great attitude. And he and Foster really uh, like to play. And it's enjoyable to see big fellows that run up and down the floor. And really, they draw their whole teammates in. I think the Brisbane Bullets will play well tonight. Uh, they need a good game. It was a little bit on the easy side against St Kilda. This will be a game to test them out. Of course, after this week, as I mentioned before, they won't have Bruton or the Senstock for a while. So the other guys will be wanting to prove to Coach Curl that they can do it. There was another great pass from Ron Radler to John George. George missed the layup, but the man himself, leaping Leroy Loggins, was there just to tap it back in, and that gives another two points to the Brisbane Bullets. Eight to the Bullets, four to the Coburg Giants. It's Foster inside, a bit of a stumble step. To recovered the ball which he's entitled to do after fumbling it and uh, then took another dribble underneath the basket and Foster really likes to drive he really likes to go to the basket he's not an exceptional outside shooter he's in a little bit of pain as well he's, he's just just above the halfway yes, line think, there I think he sort of uh, jammed a knee or a, or a hip or something as he stumbled going he into the look, basket does not look happy Radliff for the bullets comes around the top of the key there's a free shot Ten stock, strong underneath with the rebound. Up he goes. Didn't quite go in the right direction. <laughs> no, it hit the side of the backboard. He was double teamed. Larry should have kicked the ball on because when two people are guarding you, obviously somebody else is clear somewhere. Inside. Inside Carroll. Yeah, that was easy. Yep. And we've seen easy baskets really by both teams so that the offense is cranking up pretty well. The defense is yet to get in gear, although I like the bullets uh, work in the backcourt. They're applying a bit more pressure than Coburg is at this moment. John Dodge at the top of the key. It's out to Larry Sandstock. Cal Bruton's free at the top. He'll shoot that. He likes that. He'll take the two points and there's a bit of trouble. That's six points to Bruton and uh, 
it's amazing really how easily again if we saw uh, two weeks ago we saw how easy it was for the bullets to spring a man open Bruton just came off a simple down screen and was nobody was in 10 feet of him but he is suffering at the moment and that's going to cause problems so Jim Foster for the Coburg Giants and Cal Bruton for the Brisbane Bullets both with injuries early on in the piece Wayne Carroll went through the middle John Dodge didn't move but he has the towel called on him yes well they said he grabbed Carroll as he went to the basket actually I think Wayne left himself up there to dry a little bit uh, I don't think he expected to really shoot he came through there looking for a pass the pass didn't eventuate he's probably lucky to get fouled but as it is now he's an excellent foul shooter uh, shooting about an 85 percent clean clip for the year from the foul line and he makes sure of those two points that ties the ball game up 10 all with eight minutes and 40 seconds left in the first quarter the brisbane bullets playing the coburg giants at home at the brisbane entertainment center and the good news for brisbane bullets fans given uh, this week is that all games this season with the exception of one will be played out here at this fantastic complex Jim Foster just threw it up there, hoping to draw the foul, but sent stock wise to that. There's the outside shot, three points, Wayne Carroll. And uh, an off the ball foul was called, we'll have to pick this up. I think it was called on John Dorge, a, a blocking out foul away from the ball, so no foul shots are worded, but that's Dorge's second foul, and uh, Simmons won't be unhappy about that. Bruton, Radliff. John Dodge. Cal Bruton. And that shot was just pushed away. I've been very impressed with uh, uh, number seven, uh, David Graham, so far. He hasn't had much experience in the National League, but he's really melded well into the Coburg team and uh, is quite a defensive stalwart. Simmons with a big block. Gee, he had to be up there. 14. Radliff loses the ball, and Graham. Uh, Simmons finishes off, so that's a good a passage of play as you can see from one man. Love to see that again. Blocking that the ball, great. chasing it down the court, tipping in, well, tipping in, slamming in a missed shot at the other end, and that's basketball at its best. I can understand why Les Riddle is happy with, with getting that man in the team. Oh, that was awesome. I think I'd even call Benny Lewis for him. <laughs> They're trying to work on Simmons a little bit by getting the ball into George. And uh, he got it inside, and George had the shot, but I guess just a little bit too much pressure. Bit of changing momentum here, Gary. Really, the Brisbane open well, running up and down the court. In the last uh, couple of minutes, we've seen Coburg doing a good job in their transition. Graham forces one air ball. Nice pass inside to Foster, though. Unintentional, but it still counts. The Coburg Giants moves to 17. The Brisbane Bullets stuck on 10. Cal Bruton. The Bullets will need to just settle down a little bit inside to Sandstock. He drives, here's the hook shot, and once again, that was a swat. That man Simmons just jumped into the air and about 18 feet of hand appeared out of nowhere. Foster at the other end just adds insult injury. You can't complain about the pace of the game. Buckets are flying anywhere. Getting that blocked by Simmons, uh, you've got to be, referees have to make sure that that ball's not on the way down. That was perilously close to being a goal pin, but uh, might not have been, so he, Gave him the benefit of the doubt. Dorge inside. So sloppy play, good play. We've seen it all already. We've only played for six minutes. The first substitutions for the game being called by Coach Brian Curl. More Sue McGraw coming in for John Dorge and Cal Bruton. Interesting statistics that the Bullets are shooting at a 50% clip and Cal Bruton's three for three from the field. So that's, uh, that's fairly impressive. And the big man Simmons has blocked three shots already and has four rebounds and there's only six minutes of the game gone. And six points, so he's uh, had a good effect on the game already. They were Loggins with the shot that didn't, didn't quite do the expected thing. And the Coburg Giants bring it back up the court. David Graham to Wayne Carroll. Inside to Simmons. And Danny Morsu just spoiled the action there. That was a certain two points. Well, that's the way you have to guard him. You have to play in front of him as... Uh, Chris McGraw's trying to do there and let them throw the lob pass in and try and get help from behind. If you let him get the ball, if you let you stand in front uh, in back of him, let him get the ball there. It's disastrous. Lock Here we go. Let's look favorite. at his favorite. Didn't, didn't quite manage to get free enough to stuff it through the ring, but the two points here it is again. Watch this. He's aware of the, of the fact that Foster's right there. 
and just takes a little bit of care and as a consequence didn't dunk it but it was a very nice nice roll off the fingertips you've got to be ball. nervous anytime you're passing the ball into the man that Leroy is guarding because he is so quick and has such long arms and has great anticipation that he can play 10 or 12 feet off of his man and still get into that passing lane and, and seemingly coming from nowhere you just have to be a bit circumspect and say hey where's Leroy <laughs> and his man there's another steal Danny Morsu there's another two in the other end and all of a sudden that split is one point with the bullets down 18-19 a couple of minutes ago it was a different ball game with the Coburg Giants 17 to the Brisbane Bullets 10 and once again there was the intercept but they lost it and Jim Foster tidying up for the Coburg Giants and that makes the scoreline 21 to the Giants 18 to the Bullets and Radliff Foster already in double figures with 10 points. Uh, 10 points in seven minutes is not bad going at all. And so we've seen except, inside. exceptional shooting by both teams as they chase down the ball. Good play from David Graham. See, this is an exciting game. I don't know how the, the coaches like it, but I'm certainly enjoying it. 23-18 to the Giants. Four minutes, 30 left in the quarter. The bounce pass inside to Danny Morsu. Good pass from Ron Radliff. He, he's thrown a couple of goodies tonight. And Danny Morsu to the line. And Brian Curl probably hearing what you had to say a moment or two ago, Bill, and has decided to just have a chat with the boys. We'll take a commercial break here at the Boondal Entertainment and Sports Centre and be back with the National Basketball League in just a moment. Brian Kerr will be saying to the to the lads at the moment. Well, I'd be a little bit concerned if I think if I was Brian at this stage because obviously Coburg enjoys the same sort of up and down game that Brisbane has. Let's see what he says. Guys, I don't want that penetration. On the offense, be more effective with it, be more positive with what you're doing out there. Okay, run that special, but Ronnie coming off the screen, Ronnie, there's a million points there for you on that. Get that good screen for Have a look at that, guys. Well, his haircuts come right. Yes, well, what he was really saying is that Brisbane, I don't think at this stage, wants to test Coburg out in a full running game. Their execution the last couple of weeks has really been excellent. They come down, they run their plays, they're popping guys open off screens. And I think they want to stay with that game for a while until they feel a bit more comfortable in the flow of the game. At the moment, both teams are running up and down crazy, and the fact that Coburg has a uh, has a, a seven-point lead has to indicate that they're uh, sorry, a five-point lead, sorry, a four-point lead now has to indicate that they probably do it as well as Brisbane does. Rebounds, an interesting story. The Giants have six rebounds to the Bullets three, and already Simmons having a great bearing on this game. And Jim Foster has also been good inside, and it's tidied up the play a number of times. The Giants now to Simmons. Man, he is a big boy. To Wayne Carroll, the free shot and the two points. Radliff. Smart pass down to Semstock. Back out to Morsu, to McGraw. He's free. He always likes that early on in the piece. Doesn't always suit him, mind you. Number 32, Graham Longstaff into the lineup for the first time. So they've gone with two small guards now, pulling out Bruce Holcren. That's Graham. He's fouled by Morsu as he goes in. It, what, it looked to me to be a feed off, but I think that the judgment is that it was a shot. Yes, they've given him two shots on that. 25 to the Coburg Giants, 20 to the Brisbane Bullets, and still the first quarter. Let's have a look at that again and see what happens. But Danny reckons that he didn't have anything to do with the guy in touching the hand. He just got his hand on the ball, and the replay would perhaps seem to bear that out. Well, the question is, too, was he, was he passing off or was he shooting? But the referee is probably in a better position to see that. Foster taps, uh, Peter Blyde in the game taps it out, but more soon recovers. So Coburg already making two substitutions into their lineup. Peter Blyde and uh, Graham Longstaff into the lineup. Once again, Chris McGraw is free at the top. Well, I think that's a clear sign now. You don't take that anymore. He's 0 for 2 right from that same spot. Work for an easy one. Get your rhythm. What a great pass inside to Wayne Carroll. That was a top pass. David Grant, as I was saying earlier, was at the Institute last year and also played with Illawarra at the same time. And he's a very, very promising player of the future. He's only 21 years old. And, of course, Wayne Carroll there finishing off the shot. He's vice captain. He shares the vice captain role with Larry Sinstock on the Australian team. And he is a phenomenal foul shooter as well. 
David, David Graham had the shot. It was there for the taking, but he saw that Wayne Carroll was in a better position and just passed off at the last moment and gave Carroll not only the two, but the one free from the line as well. More Sue to McGraw. He'll pass it off this time to Leroy Dawkins. Ten stop. Setting, settling the play down. Morsu inside to McGraw. And McGraw just walks around his man and drops it in for two. I think that's more his style, Gary. Work it around the basket. Use that big wide body of his to uh, clear a lane to the basket for himself. Here's the big pass inside to the big man. Oh, <laughs> he was going to jam was... that one. <laughs> that was going to be a good fun shot. <laughs> Here it is again. Watch this. There's the pass inside. He's going to dunk it, and Leroy is right up there with him. See, that's that's what they want to do, as I was saying before. A, a guy is effective around the basket, as is Simmons. You want to front him when the ball's on his side of the court. Make them throw the lob pass, but gee, if you don't get any help behind, it's a it's an easy basket, and Leroy was a bit late in getting across there. Willie Simmons, two from two from the field. Let's see what he's like at the free throw line. Not bad. There's a man happy in his work. He really does have a, a, a good presence on the court. He's very, very much an up man all the time. Likes to win, likes to shoot points, likes to block shots. The kind of guy I think any team would like to have on, on their side. The Coburg Giants away to an eight-point lead. Sen Stock. And all of a sudden, there's a little more pressure on the Brisbane Bullets. Larry goes. Leroy Logan down through the middle. Sees the big guy coming and just puts a little more height in it, on it. But it still goes down. Well, he and Carroll are guarding each other. Carroll's got 12 and Logan's got 10, so I, I'm not too sure what that means, but they, uh, they don't hate each other. Carroll just barely draws iron on that one, and uh, Sidley tipped it out of bounds so that uh, Cobra gets it back. You can see that shot was real lucky to draw any iron. If it hadn't, of course, it would have gone straight out of bounds, so a bit lucky on that one. Peter Blight. He likes to use little jump hookers inside, very strong inside. Graham Longstaff with the ball. Driving, he likes to drive and penetrate. Lost the ball that time. Holcomb picks up a loose one. Flight underneath the basket. And he's fouled and sinks it. So the Bullets are looking a bit disorganized at the moment. Two minutes and three left in the quarter. 32 to the Giants, 24 to the Brisbane Bullets. Three shots to come. Peter Blight with the free one. And Jim Foster coming back into the ball game. It's interesting at this stage, the uh, Bullets really are not shooting particularly well from outside the lane. They're only two from nine, 22% from outside that painted area in the key. And that's not uh, something you want to write home about, whereas Coburg at the same time is uh, 75%. So if you hit your outside shots, you get your inside shots. If you don't hit your outside shots, they pack it up around the basket and it becomes more and more difficult to get those shots inside. Robert Sibley for the Bullets. Looking for the free ran. There he is, Leroy Loggins. The ball going underneath and looking for the ball. Morsu drives, it has it tapped away, and the bullets regain possession. It's a nice block from Peter Blight. We've seen some spectacular aerial work in this game already. Dunks, Loggins. blocks, everything. Loggins with the, the shot. It did not look at all balanced. <laughs> went through and even hit the side. He hardly ever looks so. balanced. <laughs> Just look at that wrist when he released the ball. That's the only part that needs to be balanced. It's the hamburgers he is. He can knock them back like they're going out of fashion. The drive through the middle with the hook shot. Foster, big board. Simply comes away with it. Passed off to Radliff. Great pass inside to Sibley. He's called for a travel violation, changed his pivot foot as he, as he spun around there. But Foster's been very damaging on the defense, on the offensive boards, but we haven't seen him get too many defensive rebounds. I guess he thought as long as Simmons was out there, he could just relax a little bit. Yeah, well, Simmons taking a rest now, so Foster's going to have to do a lot of work inside. Uh, long Cobra start. coach Lies Riddle likes to switch them a lot in there. There he is again on the offensive boards, and he's tough. 12 points. The man that the crowd loves to hate, 35 to the Giants, 26 to the Brisbane Bullets. Radliff, McGraw, out to Danny Morsu, who shoots from the outside. 
Thank you very much. We'll have those three points. We needed that, Brown, too. Love it. That's right. Brisbane really uh, looks a bit, a bit lethargic at the moment. They really needed something to lift them. Three-pointers pretty good. The other end of the court, Jim Foster, six for six from the field, although he did get one shot blocked, so you can't ask more from him. No doubt about it. It's a great venue, the Brisbane Entertainment Centre, for watching basketball. A record crowd of 5,900 a couple of weeks ago. See the Brisbane Bullets play. And a great crowd again here this evening. Substitutions for both teams. John Dorge coming back on for the Brisbane Bullets. Chris McGraw having a break. And here we go again. Radliff. To Loggins. Settling the play down. Pass off to Big John Dodge, who was not. How balanced as he played that. He got fouled. He got the rewards. There's only uh, 0.4 seconds left in, in this quarter, so that wasn't a particularly good foul by Peter Blythe. Uh, he, at that stage, he probably, as you said, Dodge went off so off balance, as we see here. He was really off balance, turning in the air, and uh, Peter Blythe might have been better advised just to let that shot away. As it is now, Dodge gets two shots from the foul line. The Bullets in the first quarter, four, four rebounds, one block shot. The Coburg Giants, seven rebounds and five block shots. That should be seven rebounds for the Coburg Giants and five block shots for Willie Simon. I think a couple other got their mitts in there, but the, the two that Simmons put in were absolutely incredible. Wonderful stuff. The first quarter is over here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre and the Coburg Giants are 35. The Brisbane Bullets are trailing by five points, 35-30. The first quarter is over. We'll be back to see the Bullets can pull it back in the second quarter in just a moment. The ball league game for this evening, the Brisbane Bullets playing the Coburg Giants. And for Brisbane Bullets fans, the news is that the Bullets are five behind. The Coburg Giants 35 to the Brisbane Bullets 30. That's a fairly high-scoring first quarter. I think we're in for a great game of basketball. And there's certainly been some fast scoring. Let's have a look and see the top scorers for the game so far. Leroy Loggins and Jim Foster, both in the most <laughs> the action. They didn't score all that in this game, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, their top scorers amongst the NBL players. Leroy Loggins, obviously, being uh, Brisbane's top scorer. And uh, Jim Foster, the top scorer for Coburg. And uh, we have seen some scoring, Gary. And I think part of that's due to the exceptional shooting accuracy of both teams. Bullets shooting 67% from the field. Coburg 50, but obviously doing a much stronger job on the board. So uh, it really has been an exceptional game. We keep going now. We're going to see scores like 130 at the end of this one. Oh, I love that. And it's amazing the difference in styles between Leroy Loggins and Jim Foster. Both of them big guys, but uh, Foster, of course, is a lot more bulk and gets a lot more of his money inside. Yes, well, one's big and one's big. <laughs> and Foster's big. <laughs> He's about six foot eight and a big, strong fella. Really likes to play, and uh, doesn't he stir up the crowd when he gets going? He loves to, uh, he seems to draw energy from hostility. And he has his designer designed kneecap guards on he just got out of the ocean they had to cut off his wetsuit and then forgot some i think here we go again wayne carroll we noticed that uh, cal bruton hasn't been on the court since he sprained his ankle early and i don't see him on the bench so that's going to spell real problems for the bullets in the shooting department particularly with cobra shooting so well david graham can't find it and sibley rebounds good rebound that was going to be robert sibley's rebound from the second it touched the ring he had determination written all over his face. I was speaking with Robert earlier in the week, and he's determined to make a go of it. The outside shot from Leroy Loggins. I beg your pardon, from Ron Radliff. And that's a good three to Ron. He'll be happy with that. That's his first points in the game, but a three-pointer that uh, you shoot a three of them, you get back in the scoring column real quickly. Simmons going the back door. Great move for a big fellow, wasn't that? That was quick. Agile. It was quick, balanced, beautiful shot. Let's have a look at the shooting percentages. The Bullets have shot 60% and the Giants 61%. There's nothing in it. John Dorge. He couldn't believe that he was free. And the rebound statistics. The Giants have seven rebounds and the Bullets four. Willie Simons again. Leroy Logan pulls down the rebound and brings it up to court. 
think Carroll seems to be giving Leroy Loggins a lot of room to maneuver. I think that he might, that. Want to, might want to chest him up a bit more. Sinstar from outside. I wonder if Foster said something to him. <laughs> He's, uh, certainly, uh, Foster's had the more impressive game at this stage. Wayne Carroll again, and there's two more. 39 plays, 33. 14 points now to Wayne Carroll, and he's the game-high scorer. Jim Foster has 12 for Coburg, and uh, Leroy Loggins, the only player in double figure for the Bolts, he's got 12. Sinstock's 0 for 4 from the field, so uh, they need a better game out of Larry if they're going to compete with this uh, very, very professional Coburg team. Inside to Leroy Loggins, who misses the easy one. Picked up by Robert Sibley, showing his worth. The split is four points. Radler putting a little bit of pressure on. Foster likes to go to the hoop. It's an awkward shot. The right rebound from Larry Sensor. Jim Foster going over the top. Larry ends up on the floor. But Jim Foster ends up with the foul. Watch this. Super strong over the shoulder. Had a bit of a ball, but he had a lot more bit of uh, Larry Sinstock on that one. I don't think they love each other, Bill. Well, if I was Larry and I read that about my ears, I wouldn't like the guy either. <laughs> I'd cross him off the Christmas card list. <laughs> At the end of that, a beautiful and meaningful relationship shot down. Loggins driving through the middle. That is magic. The magic that is Leroy Loggins. Wayne Carroll is not playing a good defensive game on Leroy. You've got to chest him and force him one way and get some help that way. Just uh, standing off of him and saying, go either way you want. Well, Leroy will go either way he wants. Cruz Hultman forces up a very poor shot. Has it blocked with consummate ease by about three Brisbane players. And so Coburg now has gone into a bit of a slump and the, and the bullets are surging back at them. Two points the difference. The Giants lead by two. Radliff, there's the shot. And who comes away with the rebound? Ron decides he better do it himself. Go for third time lucky. No, okay, we'll, we'll try it once more for the road. No, there's Simmons again. Five shots. Okay. Six shots. Six. Seven shots. Once for the road. Now, come Eight on, shots. Nine. Incredible. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Referee couldn't stand the excitement anymore. Look at Brian Curl. Eight <laughs> shots. Incredible. Here we go. Look at this. I don't know which number this is. I lost track. I think this might be where Simmons gets a fairly Stand nice off. block. John Dorge goes George up. misses it. Try it again, shall we, boys? Simmons Back blocks out. it out. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who did he call a foul on? I got I got lost there. It's like throwing spaghetti at the basket there for a while. All the hands oh, and arms. Very clever. Leroy Loggins drew the foul. And he'll go to the line. I quite enjoyed that last minute or so, Bill. It, it's what basketball is all about. It's entertaining. It's I, bet you got two, I bet you got two coaches that, that grossly disagree with that. <laughs> Hey, one shot as far as the defense is concerned, and if you, you get more than two shots on offense, you've got to know you're pretty lucky. The crowd's coming alive. The Bullets are just one point down. The Coburg Giants 39, the Brisbane Bullets 38. Just tricking, says that, Leroy. That looks like a Harlem Globetrotter trick, doesn't it? You know, everybody changes position and everything. No, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, net was caught up on the ring, so uh, Leroy doesn't like anything but perfection out there when he's shooting. That's his middle name. Down it goes. The ball game is tied up. 39 apiece. 8 minutes and 33 seconds left in the second quarter. And this is turning out to be an enjoyable game of basketball. Almost the intercept from Radliff. There's the pass inside. The Foster was spoiled. Sensor got a hand to it. Otherwise, it would have been a certain two points. Uh, Coburg really likes to throw that lob that, uh, like we're seeing there, and they don't throw it especially well. They, uh, they make a lot of mistakes with it. This is where Foster's so tough. Look at that, weaving through to the basket, throwing in a flying dipsy doodle, and he really is clever when he gets the ball low again. I'd like, like, to, Simmons, say, like to have seen that again. Like Simmons, you got to stand in front of him. You just can't let him get the ball down there. Well, Ron Radliff complaining that he's, his hand was on the ball. Should not have been a foul, but the ref see it otherwise, and uh, Jim Foster goes to line. Let's look at it again. See? Just it was using his hand. body beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lane violation. I think Sibley and Dorge were in there under the basket before Foster had even named it the basket, I think, that time. There was a great letter to the editor in one of the Brisbane newspapers the other day. A lady... Uh, insisting that the Brisbane crowds were, were very, very unsportsmanlike in their behaviour. And it was right at this point where people are shooting like this. 
Oh, I guess that's all part of the oh, it's part of a tennis fun. match. I could never understand the tennis people quiet. I'm serving. Gee whiz. The crowd's there to make noise. It's your concentration is supposed to be there. The Brisbane Bullets, the team on the court, the team on the bench, and the 5,000 people in the stand. That's the way that it's always going to be. If that lady is uh, watching the game tonight, it's the same in every other basketball centre in Australia. It's not unique to Brisbane. She should try to snake Pete Nillawara if she doesn't like the behaviour here. <laughs> There's sure another love pass into Simmons, and that was a better one. Foster to Simons. I'm sure, sure for a lot of I'm sure for a lot of people who came to see the Brisbane Bullets for the first time a couple of weeks ago that they would have just gone away from the centre here absolutely aghast with some of the things that happened but that is all of the fun and games you of basketball. You can see on the replay they showed there again they were doing the right thing in front of John Dorge was standing in front of Willie Simmons but again uh, Sibley or it might have even been Leroy's man to help out behind they had taken their eyes off the situation under the basket and that must sandwich the man put a guy in front of him put a guy in back of him make him throw the ball somewhere else it was 39 all but now it's 45 to the giants 41 to the brisbane bullets Senstock calling the play Lord leroy with the shot i can't get over how easy he makes that look i can't get over how easy uh, wayne carroll's playing defense on him chest him up push him one way, get some help. Nobody can guard Leroy one-on-one -on -one in this league. I think the Brisbane Bullets can be thankful that Leroy is not going to the World Championships. Otherwise, the Bullets might have had a real problem. It's bad enough with Sandstock and Cal Bruton out. And, of course, the coach away with them. Well, Cal Bruton's out now, and that is really, I think that's going to cause them problems. Inside for the Loggins. Great move inside. I think Loggins and Carroll have a bit of a love affair at the moment. Wayne's got 16 and uh, Leroy's got 20. And they're both dominating the scoring column for their respective teams. Tom Gerhardt on the court for the Bullets. Leroy Loggins has 9 for 13. That's a 69% success rate. <laughs> Did you see that, Bill? I sort of out of the front of my eye a little bit. <laughs> oh, this, hey, he's tough. <laughs> and especially with no defensive man around, he can do yeah, it all the time. Just that, watch actually, this. I think we're, we're, that oh, was wow. a missed shot, I think. <laughs> I'm not too sure whether that was a pass, but it ended up being just as good. You see uh, the G-man, Tom Gerard in the lineup, and Loggins is going to work. And John Dorge, big, strong rebound, but no point in getting the rebound if you don't put the three-footers in. No point in that at all. John played well last week with 19 points. They were up there again. John Dorge, not at all happy. The crowd on his side will have a sneak. This is probably a fair call. Let's look at it again. Yes, well, clearly he's on top of uh, Foster's shoulder there, so there's no two ways about that. Here it is again. Watch it. And Wham. John's dead. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, good try, John. Couldn't be me. We'll Never get, touched him. We'll get you an agent in Hollywood. <laughs> Well, Brisbane is doing a heck of a job in the re rebounding uh, department this quarter. They're out rebounding Coburg 11-3, uh, to 3, and uh, that's, uh, that's an impressive comeback on their part, but uh, Coburg still's got the lead. David Graham misses another one. He's been not shooting well in this game, and he keeps shooting. He's got to learn a little bit, turn the tap off. Bradley oh. doesn't find it, but Gerard gets it back, and Brisbane moving the ball fluidly now, and Sinstock finishes off. And Larry will be happy to see that one go in. That's the percentage, percentage not too hot from the outside. One from five now. Wayne Carroll from the outside. No one to pass oh, him. So he gets three for his troubles. 51 to the Coburg Giants. 47 to the Brisbane Bullets. Five minutes, 25 left in the second quarter. Four, 12 minutes. Quarters of basketball played here. McGraw. One from three from the outside. Good patience by uh, Brisbane that time. They just kept working the ball, waiting to spring the guy open, and uh, they found him in the form of Chris McGraw. And I think every time uh, Brisbane has been patient, they've gotten good shots. Lob pass doesn't come through that time. Radliff weaves his way through. He's blocked by David Graham, and Coburg's away, and this is a fantastic game. That'll be a dunk, yes, and a foul. Another one. I don't know how they can do this. I think Larry does get a piece of him. There's no two ways about that. That Simmons guy is strong. If Larry gets a hand, he, he should actually stop right there. Let's have a look at it again. 
Here's the big pass from Foster. And push. That's that shot, yes. Uh, Timeout called by Brian Curl. We'll take a commercial break while the coach has the word and be back in just a moment. I'm going to have to see a physiotherapist the National Basketball League game tonight between the Coburg Giants and the Brisbane Bullets moving at such a rate. I've got a sore neck them. Yes, it's like sitting at, at net, next to the net and watching a tennis match. It's just up and down, up and down, up and down. Both teams making some mistakes, but both teams shooting well at the same time. Let's see what Brian Curl has to say. Scrap out there, get up that loose one, though. Just run with the offense. Stay with the offense. Don't panic about it. Stay out there with it. Brian Curl suggesting they just calm down and just go with the play, settle down, there's no need to panic. Oh, that's what I was saying earlier in the game. I really believe that they, in Coburg, they may have found a team that runs better than they do. And uh, their offensive execution, that is the, uh, the precision with which they run their plays, the Bulls have been really good at that this game, and they need maybe to take a bit of the air out of the ball, slow it down a bit, and uh, frustrate Coburg, make him play a bit more defense. Don't keep giving him the ball back. Wish. It's interesting with the scorings, really. Uh, Coburg has three players in, in double figures. Carroll, 19. Willie Simmons, uh, 16. And Jim Foster, 15. While the Bullets only have Leroy Loggins. He's on 20, and the rest is scattered around. The shooting percentage is the Bullets, 8 from 19 in this quarter for 41%. The Coburg Giants, 8 from 15 with 53%, and that's reflected in the scoreboard. 55 to the Giants, 49 to the Brisbane Bullets. Grant Longstaff doesn't exactly stop at this screen here. <laughs> Didn't know it was there, Rip. Well, that's fair enough. If the screen's set to the side, you're, you're allowed to, to hit it, but you can't try and proceed through the person's chest, and that's what Grant Longstaff tried right. to do. Leaving the legs and the head in the same position. <laughs> <laughs> Prison bullets take it to the side. Leroy Loggins will start the action. Both teams now on four team, uh, four team fouls, so that uh, every foul now will be rewarded with foul shots. Outside to Loggins. To Radliff. Tom Gearhart. Zenstock. Holding Next foul called inside on Peter Black. Uh, Peter Blight away from the ball. And uh, the referees were pretty pretty quick to spot that and uh, it was a good call Peter Blight uh, you must stand in the man's path if you're impeding him just with your arms or your legs that's of course is a foul and that's what was called on Peter Blight the bullets showing a little discipline there just moving the ball around looking for the free shot Tom Gerhardt to the line as Bill Palmer said four minutes and 22 seconds left in the quarters and the fouls are up so every time there is a foul now, and either team has position, they go to the line. Tom Gerhardt sinking the first. The split is now five points. Switch for number two. Make that four. I swear, Tom Gerhardt shoots with a different hand every time I see him. I, maybe it's just an optical illusion, but I, I reckon he doesn't know which hand he wants to shoot with, but he better stick with the right hand because that just switched two foul shots. Willie Simmons again. Shooting percentages, 58 to the Giants, 57 to the Brisbane Bullets. Loggins comes away with the rebound, smartly up the court. All the way with Leroy. Sensdok thought he had it. Gerhardt thought he had it. But number 32 for the Coburg Giants, Graham Longstaff. Wants to take exception to that. However, the ball went out. Radliff put a bit of back in for the Bullets get the feeling that the, the bullets are standing around waiting for Leroy to pull this one out. The rest of them don't seem to be working that well. Of course, Leroy can shoot. <laughs> but he's not going to beat all five Cobra players. You want to put a dollar on that, Bill? A uh, dollar I can risk. Long stop. All the way. All the way underneath and then passes back out again. There's a foul called on Chris McGraw. He's holding. Chris can look so hurt. <laughs> Crestfallen, I think the word is. But, uh, he again was called with a blocking out foul. It's always tough on a, in, in that situation. But uh, again, a man has a right to be on any spot on the floor if he's there first. And that's one of the primary rules in, in uh, basketball. So 
So Willie Simmons now he enjoying this one-on-one uh, -on -one bonus. Makes the first one, he gets another one. Leroy Loggins, uh, he is doing it all. He's uh, 10 for 16 from the field. That's 68%. But again, as I said, there's going to have to be some other players that put the ball in the hole. Love the glasses. Simons now, Simmons now 5 for 5 from the foul line. And, uh, and they aren't going to want to keep fouling him. And he's letting the crowd know that he's happy about it. The crowd aren't quite so happy. Yes, number one. Again. Number one. A great game of basketball here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. The Brisbane Bullets. 53. The Coburg Giants 57. The Bullets behind. And there's three minutes left in the quarter. Denstock put the shot up. There's the foul court. I think everybody agrees with that one, including Longstaff. That was a great play by uh, by Tom Gearhart. You watch Bruce Holkren has the rebound here, but Gearhart just muscles it out of his hand, creating the loose ball, which Radliff's fouled by uh, uh, Graham. There it is again. Paul Longstaff diving at the ball, but of course he just did a simple block, took out the ankles of Radliff, and that's a foul. And uh, he doesn't complain about it. And in a sportsmanlike gesture, he tapped Ron on the backside as if to say, sorry, mate, didn't mean it. I hope that was sportsmanlike. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Radliff makes the first, so he gets the second. Six points now to Radliff. wonder who Ron's hairdresser is. Bomb the second. The mind boggles. Cooper's gone a little bit stale here, although they enjoy a three-point lead. I don't feel that they have been quite as dramatic in their play as they were earlier in the game. And uh, that's what I was going to say, get the ball into Foster. They uh, beat me to that, but Foster, he can stir up any team. He's got 17 now. Simmons has 18 and Carroll 19. So the big three for the Cooper Giants, as predicted, are performing well. Logan, that's his shot. Ten dogs kept it back out to Ron Radliff. He didn't find it. That time, Longstaff quickly up the court. Looking for that inside pass again. There's the quick pass to Radliff. The outside shot. That's an amazing shot. That's one of those ones you say, don't shoot it. There's a guy underneath the basket. Look at how quick Foster comes back the other way. And this is an incredible game. I just can't believe how this game's going. 57-61 to the Coburg Giants and there's still two minutes left in the quarter. We're going to see two teams at the end of this game, both of them with more than 100 points. I mean, right game of basketball. Turn out all the scoreboard lights. Radliff now oh, yeah. is another two. Look, why not? He Radliff now into double figures, Gary. He threw the fake, lost his man, went around the baseline, swish, two points. Willie Simmons back out again. Foster's on the outside, he wants it. Oh, that was a three-pointer. Six-foot-eight three-pointer. We saw Joe Carabino two weeks ago for Nuttawadding shoot a few, but I guarantee you wouldn't see uh, Jim Foster shoot that many. Loggins again in the action. Do they count it? Yes, they do. And Leroy would have heard the whistle as he was in the air, but he just kept on going, knowing full well that if it dropped, he would get the free one. 61-64 to the Coburg Giants. A minute 36 left in the second quarter. It's almost half time in the ball game. The National Basketball League on TVO. The game, the Brisbane Bullets playing the Coburg Giants. One free shot for Leroy Loggins. And isn't he having a great game here tonight? 24 points now. You can't complain about that. Christmas time for Leroy. 25. He's on his way to 50, maybe. Don't worry about wrapping it. He'll just take it as it comes. Here we go again. Jim Foster, 8 for 10 from the field, so he's also doing a great job being very efficient. He's got 22 points, and we're going to see a million points scored in this game. <laughs> Peter Blight now will go to the line with a one-on-one -on -one chance. He's pushed in the uh, in the hip region by Tom Gearhart, and uh, the referees are getting in the action as well in this game. And this It's an, an incredible half of basketball. We've seen absolutely everything except maybe a fight. Let's hope we don't see that, but oh, uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure the crowd won't. wouldn't mind either. <laughs> We've certainly seen some great shooting. You heard from the well-mannered, polite Brisbane crowd. Still went through. An amazing first half score, 65 to the Coburg Giants, 62 to the Bullets, and it's not over yet. wonder how many points would have been scored if uh, Cal Bruton had been out there. We still haven't seen him emerge from the locker room. I hope he's okay. 
it would be terrible for Cal. I feel so sorry for him if he's done himself a mischief and he can't make it to Spain. That would not be justice at all. For a man who's done so much for basketball here in the Sunshine State, it's, it's just desserts, quite apart from his talent. Larry won't be happy about that. He did all the hard work, got himself inside, and then missed the easy layup. We saw an example of uh, Jim Foster's strength on that time. Really, it was two against one. He was the one, the meat and the sandwich and he pulled that ball in now he's got a chance to add two more to his total and he's already got 22 and it's still the first half the four point play the two you don't get the two that you give them in return jim foster to the line one, one and one one for two from the line so far Make the right rebound for three. chris mcgraw violation called foul call or violation there is that a violation McGraw, McGraw went a little early the crowd don't like it it's a this. tough call See, everybody everybody, everybody, everybody goes in there every time I, I think that that's a rule that they should change they should play it like they do with the pros in America that is as soon as the shooter releases the ball let everybody step in because it really is something you could almost pick out a violation every foul shot look at this again Gerhard in almost before he left his hand well, that's how it should be let it go just over a minute left in the second quarter. 68 to the Coburg Giants, 62 to the Brisbane Bullets. Sends off. Tom Gearhart. There he is, Leroy Loggins. Thanks very much, says Leroy. Uh, Bruce Holkren's picked him up, and he hasn't had much more success than Wayne Carroll had, and, and Loggins is on fire, and I think if Brisbane can find one more productive offensive player, they're very quickly going to even this match up. Can Foster, you, can you believe me, that? He's not supposed to do that. That's not in the rules. No, it's it says six foot eight guys are supposed to stay in the paint. He's Roger. got 27 now. Leroy and he both have 27, and it's still not halftime. Radliff. Ben Stock, who faked goodness knows how many times. And Leroy Logan just pushes it back in, gets the two points, and goes to the line. The foul is called. Leroy gets the free kick. 15 seconds left in the second quarter. 71 points to the Coburg Giants. You see, Leroy just gets his fingertips on that on his right hand. Of course, he's a left-hander. That was a tough tip. He, he's three for three from the line, has a chance to make it four for four. And again, reviewing that rule, no player can step into the lane. That means breaking the vertical plane of the line with their foot. They don't even have to be on the ground until the balls hit the ring. So you can see how difficult that would be for the referees to judge. Foster, looking for Simmons. He finds him. I think Chris McGraw found a bit of uh, Simmons that time. And again, that was the same situation. Watch it again. McGraw did a good job getting in front of him, but there wasn't that much help behind, and... Uh, he tried to bring down the ball and brought down a piece of Willie with him as well. Well, McGraw, who is six foot six, two meters, and he couldn't get up high enough to stop Simmons getting the ball. That man is awesome. He's using him a lot better than I've seen lately, too. I think that if I was uh, Cobra coach Les Riddle, I would think twice about uh, any time coming down the court that Simmons, Simmons doesn't touch the ball. Simmons. <laughs> Potato, potato, I don't know. It's Simmons, I think. Well, I won't tell him that you call him Simons, okay? If you won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. There's five seconds left in the second quarter. The bullets are going to have to be quick. Four. Oh, yes. <laughs> he gets the foul after all of that. I don't know what happened there. They're saying it's, there's still 1.1 seconds left, so the yeah. foul was called. And from the outside the three-point line to boot. Well, this game has got it all. We're looking at a half-time score of 73-70 if, uh, if, uh, if Ron can sink them all. The That's almost a full-time score. I think the referees didn't uh, judge that outside the three-point line, so he'll only get two shots rather than three. No justice. Red lift, that's point number 12. One to come, 1.1 seconds remaining in this half. I would have liked it if that had gone in. Would have made my <laughs> we wouldn't want to play the second half. We say, that'll do you, fans. <laughs> what a great game of basketball we're enjoying here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre tonight. The Coburg Giants have 73. 
the Brisbane Bullets have 69, a fantastic game of basketball. Tony, you'd have to be happy with the way things are happening. Well, what an amazing game of basketball, as you said, Gary. The scoring has just been incredible. Of course, the interest for the Bullets is uh, what's happened to Cal Bruton and how is he? As you said, it would be an absolute tragedy if uh, he suffered some sort of injury that won't allow him to go to Spain. We'll be checking on that. We'll have all those details when we come back to Boondall. Enough time. What is the news on Cal Bruton? Well, Cal did sprain an ankle, as we, we suggested. There was a doctor in there working on him. Uh, uh, the bullets are fairly confident. If needed, he can come back and play in the second half. His ankle's been heavily strapped. So there's a bit of a bonus there, but really, you, when, you've, when you've been out that long and you allow your ankle to cool down, it is very, very difficult for him to get back. Perhaps the doctor gave him some painkillers to deal with it, but even then, he's going to be stiff. Actually, it was interesting because both coaches had locked themselves in the locker room. I could hear a lot of growling and groaning and, and uh, a bit of noise being produced out in the corridor, but I couldn't get in to see either team, and both team only walked out with about a minute left on the, before the start of the second half. And already we have action as the second half starts here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre, the National Basketball League game for this evening. The Brisbane Bullets playing the Coburg Giants. And as the second half starts off, the scoreline reads, Coburg Giants 73, the Brisbane Bullets at 69. The Bullets on attack at the moment. The Bullets in white, the Coburg Giants in green. Inside and then back out to Radliff. And Radliff continuing on where he left off in the first half. The crowd likes that. 71-73. Almost the intercept from Leroy Loggins. Carroll with the outside shot, the free shot, and that's two points. 21 points now for Carroll. Top scorers for Cobra were Carroll with 21, Willie Simmons 20, and Jim Foster 27. And for the uh, Bullets, Loggins has 30 and Radliff 15. And Foster really, he really gets up and down the floor quick for a big man. Well, I'm right with Ron Radliff there. I wouldn't have stood in the way either. <laughs> Doesn't Willie Simmons look different without his glasses on? Yeah, I wonder what happened. Might have sat on him. <laughs> Leroy Loggins. That's Leroy's shot. Once again, we go through this business of every man in the world having a go, tapping it in. But Leroy eventually, uh, uh, Larry Senstock eventually gets there. And gets no, the no jump, jump shot. <laughs> We've seen that a lot of times. Actually, the Brisbane has done a fantastic job on the offensive boards but they haven't been able to convert out of it consistently. And there's there another one of those steals. Watch Bruce Hulkern. Yes! <laughs> Bruce Hulkern just gave him a Christmas present. There was no way in the world when... Here when, we go again. Watch this. And <laughs> you can see up, Bruce. And boom. Bruce Hulkern with his hands on his knees uh, in the background. He knew he didn't have to chase. And he knew he'd made a blue. Inside the Foster. He didn't get the foul. He was looking for the foul. Sandstock comes away with the ball. And Ron Radliff. Hurries it up the court. Danny Morsu into Chris McGraw, who looks for the baseline shot. It's not there. Sandstock gets the down. He just dropped it to his hands after coming off a couple of giant players. 77 all. The last time the game was evened up, it was a 39 all. Is the outside shot. Oh, stop that. He's given a bad name for big men doing stuff like that. That's his third three-pointer, and I don't think he's missed one. That's 32 points. He and Loggins both have 32. What an offensive game. Yeah, I feel for Larry Sandstock because it's not right that a big guy should be able to shoot from out there. There's the pass to, to Leroy Loggins. There's that shot again. And that's another two points. I'm running out of space on the score sheet. 34 now for Leroy. And where is the D at the other end? Foster. And he's got 34. And really, what's happened to the defense? 82-79. We've only just started the third quarter. There's still 23-odd minutes of basketball left in this game. We're going to see a very high-scoring game. What's happened to the famous Brisbane Bullets defense? Chris McGraw, it's changed into the famous Brisbane Bullet offense. That's why Coburg again with a fast break. They've run the fast break well. Ooh, that was a chance he passed that Holkren tried to fold to Foster, but uh, Foster was fouled, probably saving him, and there's no way he was going to control that pass. That's another foul for Larry Senstock. He's going to have to come off for a while. I would imagine... That Robert Sibley with John Dorge would come back on. Three fouls to Sinstock now, that's right. Simmons, he hasn't seen the ball this quarter. Look at Can that. Can you believe that? That's the jump hook I was talking about in the game introduction. That is a beautiful shot, and you can't guard it. You just can't let him have the ball. He now has 22. 
We're going to get a new biro here. Ron Radliff calling the action. Danny Morsu. Just quietly working his way closer to the basket. It doesn't quite go in. And the Coburg Giants come away with it. It's a three on two. Don shooting foul called on Danny Morsu that time. Foster, 14 for 17 from the field, 83%. A few of those have been lay-ins, but he's earned them. He gets up and down the floor. David Graham dishing off at the last. He was fouled on the dish, dish off, so it won't be a shooting foul. Since he was so close to the basketball, do you not think he would have been better off to try and draw the foul and shoot it himself? Well, you don't know. It's, in the air. Yeah, it's one of those last-minute things. He obviously felt he had drawn, drawn the defense. In retrospect, of course, if he knew he was going to be fouled, he probably would have shot. Wayne Carroll, another two points. That's 23 points for him now, and we've got uh, Carroll on 23, Simmons on 22, and Foster on 34. If they keep scoring at this rate, they're going to upset our computer. Oh, wonder, the wonderful magic of Leroy Loggins. He kind of felt, he kind of thought that he should have got another one. He was fouled as he was shooting. Yes, well, he may have been lucky. To me, he sort of was creating the contact too. I think it was a good call on the official, no call at all because the offense probably generate more of that contract, contact than the defense is. Let it go. Foster. Jim Foster. Off balance. He's fouled. He'll get two shots. And, oh, gee, I wouldn't like to be a referee in this game. I mean, your, your wrist would fall off just signaling the two points, let alone trying to call fouls. <laughs> Brian Curl is standing up. Brian Curl is perhaps not the most animated of coaches. Well, he wouldn't be overly happy that... Uh, Another foul, Cal Bruton coming back in. And don't, don't the crowd like that. Danny Morsu taking a break. Cal Bruton back in the action. It'll be very interesting to see how that ankle holds up. This game has been played at a frenetic pace. Yes, well, uh, we've seen some tremendous shooting. Loggins, 67%. Uh, uh, Carroll, 60%. Foster, 83%. And uh, gee, you have to go a long way before you see an offensive game like this. Foster wants to know what's happening here. Just give us the ball, ref. I'll just continue to whack it in. Not a problem. Don't worry about the others. It'll be all right. I'm not too sure what went on there. I think it was just a query from uh, Foster's figures from the line. Four from six, 67%. Well, somehow either a technical foul has been called or an intentional foul because clearly Cobra's going to get the ball after these foul shots but uh, i'm not sure i really didn't see what happened i think uh, there are a few people that wondering what's happening yeah i missed that as well you must have been looking at the wrong place and another there. shot well there must have been a technical foul that we didn't see and, and in a different play phase the technical foul must have been made after jim foster shot his foul, first foul shot which makes it a new play phase if it was done, if the technical foul occurred before he shot his first foul shot, then there would just be no second foul shot. So that's a possible six-point play now, we see, as Wayne Carroll pumped in two more. 25 to his total. Into Foster again. Falling sideways, looking for air support, but flushed with success, and quite rightly so, but that one was not going to go in. Cal Bruton favoring, favoring the other leg. He's looking pretty good. That's a good start. <laughs> been on the court 30 seconds we haven't seen him for most of the first half after he had that action with his ankle he comes out and bombs on the three-pointer there's no way he, he's probably had a painkiller in that I, I think he's moving exceptionally freely really inside the big simmons again he missed the hook shot but that's okay jim foster's there to clean up the crumbs and they still get the two points thanks mate foster now 38 points 92 to the Coburg Giants, 84 to the Brisbane Bullets. And we're only in the third quarter. There'd be half the teams in the NBL be happily happy for that for a score for the end of the game. Robert Sibley wins his way into the basket. Willie Simmons gets the foul. He wants to know what's happening there. He can't understand it, and the crowd love it. Great drop step move by Sibley, and really that is exactly what Brisbane need. They've been relying totally on Logan for the offensive production. They've here, scattered the points around the again. Another great player, big step into the basket. Round. Gets his uh, body by, sinks his foul shot. Three-point play, Robert Sibley. He now has five in the game. Making the bonus points. Up we come, David Graham. Steve Browning. That's better defense from the Bullets. 
forcing the What's Cobra that? Giants out. Block shot by Loggins. Bruden pulls up for another three-pointer. That's off, but Sidley's got the sit. And in. And in, yes. Five watch Robert Sidley now for the last four or five games, and he's improved out of sight. Watch this again. Cal Bruden puts up the shot, knowing that Sibley is underneath. The shot does not go in. Sibley, with all the strength that he's mustered and got, bombs it back up for two, and will go to the line when they come back after the, 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 the timeout. 92 to the Coburg Giants, the Brisbane Bullets, 89. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment. Quarter gone that we have a scoreline of 92-89. Brian Kilf can't believe it either. Let's go to the huddle and find out what the action is all about. Back out they come. Robert Sibley has one free throw to make. What I was saying before, Gary, is that uh, it's very important that Sibley and, and Bruton come in and start carrying some of the scoring load because Coburg's got three avenues through scoring and uh, Brisbane has only got one. And as good as Loggins is, he's going to need some help. Sibley, really, now he's two for two from the line, three for four from the field and five rebounds. So his, in the short time he's had on the court, he certainly has done the job. David Graham inside. Right hand from... Ron Radliff, but unfortunately the ball just sneaks out of out of out of bounds. <laughs> I'm amused by the chant going around the crowd. Defense. <laughs> I think that I think these teams think that defense is something you keep the D sheep in. <laughs> Another great rebound from Robert Sibley. He's invaluable here tonight. Radliff. Ten stock with the ball done. Oh, oh get dead. that out of there. Shop's closed. That was the magic that is Leroy Loggins. Here it is again. It should have been a certain two points. And Leroy nearly lost the top of his head. <laughs> he capitated himself. <laughs> the bottom of the backboard. Well, they've bolted up a few doors here lately. That's Leroy's third block. I think we'll give him two for that one. That was great. Wayne Carroll to put it in for the Coburg Giants. Inside against the Simmons. He's decided to put his glasses back on. Leroy Loggins pulls down the rebound. Cal Bruton dictating the play. Radliff holding foul, holding foul called on under on Steve Brini. Steve Brini, an ex-Olympian, uh, played with DeLong last year, just come into the Cobra uh, lineup this year and acts as assistant coach as well. Lob pass into Loggins, can't control it. Sibley nearly comes out of it. Graham does come out with it. And Coburg's away again. Graham showing some handy ball work. And finishes it off. So everybody's getting into the act now. 94-90. The bullets four down. Willie Simmons cleans up for the Coburg Giants. Fast break time. Saw neck time for commentators. Oh, That's another two points. The team really that settles in. I mean, both teams are just running out of control. But they're getting enough rewards for their play that there's nothing really to encourage them to change it but I think the team that probably settles in and plays a more deliberate style is going to win this game inside the Sibley again he's got Simmons behind him he threw the pass for Cal Bruton but it was intercepted and Bruton intercepted straight back again great stuff Cal Bruton here's the outside shot for three <laughs> Just in case you missed me, boys, I'm back now. Here it is again, watch it. Stopped outside the three-point line. I must have a word with Cal. It is allowed to hit the sides every now and again. <laughs> he doesn't know how. Inside again to Simmons, who passes off. That's a great two points to Wayne Carroll. 27 points down to Carroll. 98 to the Giants, 93 to the Bullets, and not even the end of the third quarter and we're going to have 100 points on the board any moment. Cal Bruton, very quick. Gave him an eyebrow fake. Uh, David Graham went for it and uh, Cal just stayed on the ground. Knew he was going to draw the foul. Probably was disappointed he couldn't actually get into his shooting motion quick enough, although he thought he did. Referee didn't call a shooting foul. However, Coburg's in the, uh, the foul penalty situation so that uh, Cal Bruton will go to the line with one and one. Probably just as good as getting the two shots anyway. Yeah, Cal super reliable at the free throw line. 
What an entertaining game of basketball we have on our hands. Kel, 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 what are you doing to us? There's the fence non-existent. However, the Bullets managed to scrape out of that, come away with the rebound, and everybody breathes a sigh of relief. Jimmy Foster's been off for a long time for Coburg. I don't think that in a game like this you can afford to rest any one of your studs for more than uh, about a minute at a time. Inside to Logan. There's the hook shot. There's the two points. And took away the basket. He took away the basket. Called a charging foul, saying that Leroy used his body to get up into the air first to get himself open, made the contact, then shot the ball so that the offensive charge has been called and the basket does not count. Well, William, if he called if he called it that time, he should have called it a couple of other times as well. Well, I think that was probably a fairly reasonable call. The defense seemed to be just standing there. They were bent over backwards, and, and when that occurred, Loggins hadn't released the ball. It's hard to be consistent all the time. Of course, that's what the players want. But uh, nevertheless, it just makes the game a bit more interesting. Try telling that to Brian Curl when your team is five points down. Time ticking by for the Coburg Giants. It's inside. Oh, it's charging foul called on Peter Blythe. Uh, <laughs> he falls to the floor in disbelief. I thought it was there, but I think this is a bad play. Look at Peter Blythe. Willie Simmons all alone underneath the basket. Mm -hmm. Peter Blythe really played a selfish move on that one. He went for his shot. An easy little drop uh, bounce pass into Simmons, and it would have been two points. And uh, I think Blythe forced the pace. He should have given that ball up. Larry Sensdok breathes a sigh of relief. If that had been called against him, it would have been number four for Larry. And with all that, Cal Bruton has only been on the court again for a couple of minutes. Two from three from the three-point line and five from six from the field. So Cal's continuing on his merry shooting way. He's had an absolutely brilliant couple of weeks of shooting. There's the intercept. Oh, there. Here we go. He's got to be. There it is again. <laughs> it's all go. And Sensdok comes away with the ball to Radliff already. It's hard stopping stuff. Settle it. They need a good shot here. Settle it. There's the good shot. That's a wide open shot. That doesn't bite. Sinstock doing much better on the board this half. Yes, we like that. Captain approval from his teammates. The crowd like it. The third quarter sees the Coburg Giants ahead by just three points, 98-95. Graham Longstaff is really hurting on the sidelines there. He went down. I could hear his knee hit this floor clear from here with my earphones on. So he really did damage to his knee. There's no two ways about it. Since the play, one try, two dicks. And that's always sad when you see a player leave the court like that. Oh, he really hit the floor hard. Hope he's okay. The third quarter has just two minutes and seven seconds left in it. And the, crowd, <laughs> and the crowd here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Basketball is being played in the true spirit of basketball. And it's one of the reasons that basketball has become one of the major games in the last couple of years. It has really taken it off, taken off. And it's caught the imagination of the people of Brisbane. Sinstock doing a great job on the boards uh, this third quarter. And he really is uh, bringing Brisbane right back into this game. Although that, uh, the bullets have gone a bit cold at the offensive end. Uh, Robert Sidley doing a great defensive job on uh, Foster inside. Yeah. Radliff coming loose with the ball. They really need to set it up and get a good shot. Can't get any better than that, but Simmons talked him out of that one. And I think he probably got a fingernail on that. Foster. Foster. Oh, <laughs> the way they're shooting, I'm surprised that didn't go in. Larry Sinstock has 10 rebounds this quarter, so he is doing a fabulous job off the glass. We'll probably find out afterwards, Bill, that, that was supposed to be a shot. <laughs> Ron Radliff. What a great, what a great behind the back pass to Leroy Lowe. And that deserved to go in. That deserved to go in. 38 points to Loggins. I think Coburg now wants to set it up. Go to Jim Foster a little bit. He's got uh, Robert Sidley on him. Obviously, Sidley not having as much experience in the game. He's done a good job denying the ball into Foster. There they go to Foster now. He tries to get through. Sidley has his hand, claiming he has his hand on the ball. The foul's called, the push underneath. And uh, that really is what, that was on the cards. That was what Coburg wanted to do. You can see Sidley reaching in there, just getting a piece of uh, Jim Foster. 
So Foster now has a chance to go to 40 points. 98, 97, the Bullets trail by one, but Foster goes to the line. Chance to make two. However, with 43 seconds left in the third quarter, the Bullets, the Bullets hang on to possession, will gain possession and have an opportunity to come back. We could end up with either a tied third quarter or the Bullets are hit by one. At this stage, it's 99 to the Coburg Giants, 97 to the Bullets. Now, they'll be looking for one good shot, preferably a good three-pointer. And that will put them in the lead going into the fourth quarter. Settling it down. Cal Bruton says, I oh, know it is right through the middle. That'll be a three-pointer. He gets the two points. Right, he'll that has... ties it up at 99 all. 39 apiece. 70... 79 apiece, I think. And now again at 99 all. What an enthralling game of basketball we're watching here tonight. Look at that. And Cal Bruton uh, was fouled, of course, in the act of shooting. He gets a chance to put the bullets in front for the first time for quite some time and bring up the century. Well, it's the first time since way, way back because they were behind and came as close as uh, 39 all. So they haven't been in front since then. You wait for the crowd. The crowd will tell you. Cal Bruton now with 15 points. 25 seconds to go. We'll see if Coburg works for one final shot. I don't know if any team's capable of holding the ball, holding on to the ball for that long. Simons with one of his little jump hookers. Foster can't find it. Greeny with the rebound. He can't find it. Foster gets another chance oh, and foul. Oh. And this is incredible. 12 seconds left in the third quarter. They're going to have to change the glass backboards. I've never seen them get hit so many times. There has to be, I don't know how many shots they've taken. Here we see another rebounding sequence as Foster finishing it off. And I don't know how many times we've seen three, four, or five offensive rebounds coming in bunches like that. There's the first one in. That makes it three. Foster now with 42 points. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Bruton will look for a three-pointer. There it it's is. It's away. It's not there. One second left. Oh, Ron Radler for the hook shot from halfway. What a fantastic third quarter we've had here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. This has to be one of the most enjoyable games of basketball I think I have ever seen. The Coburg Giants 102, the Brisbane Bullets 100. We'll take our breath, we'll be back in just a moment with the fourth and final quarter. Entertainment Centre, the fourth quarter moments away from starting and have we got a ball game on our hand the national basketball league game this evening the brisbane bullets playing the coburg giants and the statistics the statistics tell the story the score line 102 for the coburg giants and the brisbane bullets just a bucket behind on 100. so we've certainly seen some interesting statistics tonight Willie Simons doing rather well, pulling down rebounds left, right and centre. Let's have a look at uh, turnovers. Uh, Leroy Loggins responsible for quite a few of them, Bill. Well, of course, a player like Loggins, again, I emphasize this is for the whole year. He doesn't have 36 in this game where even Leroy Loggins would be sitting next to the coach. But uh, if a player like Leroy... Uh, sees so much of the ball and is the focal point of the Brisbane attack so it's it's, it's certainly quite uh, apparent that he would make a lot of turnovers. David Graham is the other one up there he rates in the top 10 in the NBL in turnover and of course he's the one that does most of the ball handling for Coburg and the same thing is true of that of course he's going to make some more mistakes than other players. Well settle down the fourth quarter just about to get underway here at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre and let me assure you we've got a game of basketball on our hands. Take the phone off the hook and make sure you've turned the jug off and everything is organized and just settle back because this fourth quarter is going to be a beauty i think it's the first time for a long time that the brisbane bullets have come up against a team that uh, is playing them at their own game uh, the brisbane bullets when they uh, get their tails up go for it but the coburg giants doing exactly the same thing tonight and uh, as far as defense is concerned we won't talk about that too much we can't but, <laughs> but offense both teams are showing us both teams are showing us how it's done this will be one of the great moves of the game Leroy Loggins showing us the, the slam dunk and that's one of the plays that makes basketball such a great game well, it's interesting in a game like this Gary that uh, 
that has been such an offensively orientated game that very, very often in a game like that, it's actually a sequence of good defensive plays that end up making the difference. Both teams obviously have their tail up offensively. The team that can settle in and put together three or four real good defensive sequences is going to win this game. It's definitely a game worth staying up for. You're enjoying the basketball on TPO. The National Basketball League, the Brisbane Bullets playing at home against the Coburg Giants. And they're trailing two points. That's the first time that they've actually got the ball off the off the tap off. So hope that augurs well. Leroy Loggins being uh, Larry Sensok being super strong underneath. He drives to the basket. The foul is called. Well, he says, "Who me, Rev? Must have been somebody else. The other guy with glasses. Unfortunately, there's no one else with glasses on the court at the moment. So you less have to live with that. Here it is again. Watch this. Leroy just dropping his um, Larry. Sorry, Larry." He's dropping his shoulder and driving through there. We'll talk about some shooting as uh, Larry tries to connect on one of these two shots. Foster, 16 for 22 for 78% from the field. Loggins, 17 for 27 for 63% from the field. And uh, Loggins got 38 and Jim Foster has 42. So that's fairly incredible. Bruce Holtgren doing the hard work for the Coburg Giants. Seeing it up. I think if as I was uh, Coburg, I'd be looking at Foster and Simmons every time down the floor. Simmons uh, had a very quiet third quarter. He's only one for four, but he, you know he can do it. And uh, so can that man that just missed that shot there. Uh, they really need to go to him, get one on one side of the court shooting the ball, and the other on the other side of the court rebounding the missed shot. Here we go again. The Brisbane Bullets on attack. Ben Stock came around, found himself free, and rather than driving, shot it up. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So the Coburg Giants come back down the court. 101-102. You can't get it any closer than that. What an entertaining game of basketball. Foster has a little bit of a drive through the middle there. Oh, Simmons with a great follow dunk. I don't know whether the referees will count that or not. I don't know who the foul was called on. Let's have a look at that again. There's the shot. And there comes Simmons. I think he's called the foul on Simmons. Now we'll see if the basket counted. Yes, the basket is counted. Basket counted, fouls on Simmons. Great follow shot. Gee, he was a couple of feet of right above the ring. But uh, that's a bit of a problem for him now. He's on four personal fouls, and Cobra going into this last quarter with over 10 minutes to go we will not want to lose him. Oh! Now, he likes that three-point line tonight. 18 points, four of them coming from his four three-point shots. That's the Toyota coach. Jim Foster. He'll be looking for Simmons. He's found him. There's the shot. Simmons in good position underneath, but not required. The bucket dropped. That's his first two points of the Ten. game, Bruce, Bruce Holkren. Then stop. Cal Bruton certainly making his presence felt. Uh, three from five for 60% when it comes to three-pointers. Doing okay. One. Ron Radler drawing the They're going for that eyebrow tonight. Just saying, wanting to get the specky block goes for it. And then there's nothing worse than being in the air and looking down, seeing your defensive man smiling at you on the ground, saying, when you need to come down, sucker, and foul me. There's a three, three seconds called. Now the foul is called. Oh, foul. Wayne Carroll has the foul called against him, and uh, that takes Leroy to the line. 106, 104. Leroy, Leroy looking okay from the free throw line. Yes, that's right. Four for four from the free throw line. But uh, it's wow. interesting to note too, and this is going to be very helpful for the Bullets, that uh, Coburg now in uh, that team foul situation, they've got four team fouls. Brisbane has none, so that's a real disadvantage for Coburg uh, because every time they do pick up a cheap foul, it's going to be punished. Loggins now, 40 points. There's the ball game tied up again. 106 ball, can you believe it? The fourth and final quarter in the still, just under 10 minutes left. I'll tell you what, that guy Simmons can jump. If he keeps up there getting so high, we're going to have to have a word and get him a license. No man can fly like that without a license. called on Larry Sinstock, and I believe that might be his fifth and disqualifying foul. It is. Yes. And that's a big blow because Larry Sinstock has actually ac absolutely dominated the boards in the second half. Tom Gearhart's got a big role to fill in there, guarding Willie Simmons. But I think that we should make the point, although Sinstock has gone out, it is what a great job young Robert Sibley has done on Jim Foster. Foster, of course, a 
has 42 points, but he has gone markedly quiet since Sibley's picked up the defensive role. Larry Sandstock, 4 from 12, which is 33% from the field. But that's nothing to write home to Grandma about, but the rebounds tell the story for Larry. 14 rebounds, 10 of them in the third quarter to shoot a bad shot. Foster probably even fouled there. He pulled uh, Sibley's hand away, and uh, he, he missed the shot, and Sibley continues to do a good defensive job. One of the few we've seen in this game. Foul was called. That was a great play on Wayne Carroll. He picked that ball right up off his shoe straps into the basket. Foul was called on Leroy Loggins, and that's his fourth foul. So there's a bit of foul problem creeping into the offensive game that the foul total has to be relatively high. The free throwing has been very good tonight. Not too many guys have missed. Jim Foster missed a couple. Mr. Carroll, however, five from five from the line. Spoke just a mite too soon. You heard the court commentator say that was an intentional foul. Get it back at halfway. Well, he made the two points. He gets the one bonus and then the ball from the side. If he missed the basket, and he's made that now, so that was a four-point play, really, for Wayne Carroll. And now he goes to 29 points. 110 to the Coburg Giants, 106 to the Bullets. Leroy Loggins. <laughs> kind of slipped out of his hands there. That was not a shot kind of uh, was helped out of Wayne Carroll's hands that time. Wayne Carroll's had a good offensive game, 12 for 20 from the field. That's pretty good shooting, 60% for his 29 points. Foster, and that's really, that's going to be a danger for Coburg. Sibley's done a good like Jim Foster. He now has 44 points. Logan Bruton from outside. By that Simmons, wasn't Simmons. It? Yeah. Yes. He really got up there high and uh, came down with to uh, give himself a relatively comfortable bulge, although I think in a game with this much scoring, uh, you're going to want to be uh, 15, 20 points up before you feel comfortable with about two seconds left. Seconds. It's coming down to the line. And this is going to be the most important eight minutes of basketball that the Bullets have played for some time. They're going to need to settle it down. They're going to have to con play controlled basketball. They have to work like never before to hold out Foster and Simmons from underneath. They can't afford to give the big guys the ball like that. That's exactly what happened. That's what that was by the prize. That was fortunate, really. Cal Bruton came in, helped out on Foster, knocked the ball loose, and it flipped into Holcren's hand, who was just sitting there. He hit his fourth point. Plays like that to uh, kill a coach. Good defense, no reward. Two-pointer from Ron Radliff. He now has 17. 108 plays 114, the Bullets six points down. Seven minutes of fit at six points can be made up very quickly. Mind you, it can just as easily go the other way. Inside to Carroll. Brave shot trying to shoot over Leroy Loggins. He had to fade away too much. The ball fell up short. Brisbane on the fast break. Loggins crossing to Sibley. Oh, he yes. stuck his hand in. What a draws the foul. I don't think the pass was intended towards him, but across to Gearhart, which is coming into your position to shoot anyway, and was fouled. And knew it, so he grabbed it as he went by. Robert Sibley to the line. Sibley two from two from the line. Let's call that three from three. Eight points in the game. Uh, now this is the first time that uh, Brisbane's broken into that se sequence. Sibley now, he enters into the double figures. Another player in double figures. He has 10 points. 114 to the Coburg Giants, 110 to the Bullets. It comes to straight back out again. They'll be looking for Foster. You can count on that. I just put a massive block down low for him. But Sibley just walked around it as if it wasn't there. Foster Calbert. fighting a little bit. Tries the three and he gets the pass into Simmons. <laughs> Uh, Root was in there amongst it somewhere. You could not even see it. Danny Morsu comes on for the Bullets. Cal Bruton takes a break. Tom Gearhart with a hand right in front of Willie Simmons. Desperately trying to soften. There's Foster weaving inside. He's yeah. so tough there. I thought, but uh, nevertheless. <laughs> Well, that's been a common complaint, but he doesn't seem to ever get called for it, so maybe uh, it's pretty 
pretty clever with it. 42 now for for Leroy. Foster has 40 cents of difference. Carroll shooting over Loggins. He finds it. Problem <laughs> that the bullets find themselves That's right. in. They get it up the court. They work hard. They get a good basket. And then just for those three or four seconds, they relax and pop it away for two. Sibley from the outside. That's okay. Gerhard gets the rebound. That's the man who should be shooting from the outside. Leroy Loggins. Or Mike wherever. Any room left on your pipe? I'm going to have to charge uh, Channel O for paper here. 44 now to Leroy. Still four points of difference. Setting the screen. Brini working with the ball. His experience finding Simmons inside. That play, very, very intelligent play by Steve Brini. He felt the switch on the screen. Simmons had to be left unguarded. Stopped, flipped it into him. And two more points to Willie Simmons. And that's 26 for him. Here's the intercept again. Guy draws the foul, gets the best. What an incredible shot. He was nearly out of bounds as he flipped that ball back in. Danny, watch this. Look where he is when he shoots that shot. And it went in. And move. it went in. And he's got 48 points. 122 to the Coburg Giants, 114 to the Brisbane Bullets. 48 to Jim Foster. That's a cricket score. <laughs> There'd be a few Englishmen that wish that was their cricket score, wouldn't there? Foster now, he's uh, 7 for 11 from the line, so in spite of his brilliant game from the field, he's only ordinary from the line. And once again, it's Robert Sibley that pulls down the rebound. Here he goes again. Leroy Loggins, and the race is on to see who can hit 50 first between Loggins and Foster. Six points of difference. Another basket here from Coburg. It'll start to be come in. Need a good defensive play. Leroy Loggins versus Jim Foster. Supporting cast of the rest of the Coburg Giants and the rest of the Brisbane Bullets. There's that man again. 50, 50 points. points. Congratulations to Jim Foster. That's, that's a great effort. Inside to Leroy. There's the hook shot. Still plenty of time for the Bullets, of course, in a game like this. Wayne Carroll picking up his fourth foul, but they really don't want to panic and go into their three-point shooting routine tour and make a defensive play at the other end of the floor. They have plenty of time to peg away that lead and get back into the ball game. For sure. These two foul shots will help immensely, of course. The field 65%, Foster 19 for 28, 69%. So not only are they scoring, they're putting up enough shots to give themselves a real immense total. Loggins now seven for eight from the foul, seven for nine from the foul line. 124 to the Coburg Giants, 117 to the Brisbane Bullets. Almost an intercept by Leroy Loggins. The I ball could... game is nearly over and he's still moving as fast as he was at the start. Well, Foster getting a rest at this stage. I think that that's the Foster out at this stage, tired or not. Steve Breeny tries and gets the play by Sidley. Brisbane now with a chance to draw a bit closer. Loggins wide open. Great pass from Radliff. 49 to Loggins. Great pass tonight. Five points of difference. Where's Jim Foster? He should be in there for Cobra. Have to go to Simmons. Oh, dear me. Oh, that is unbelievable. Let's have a look at that again. Now, Chris is he, he's right there. Oh, I thought maybe that he might have been moving his feet a little bit. Of course, when you're moving, here's a better angle. Uh, but uh, I think the referee oh, there's no two ways about that well with 3 minutes and 45 seconds left in the ball game and you're 5 points down 124 to 100 and gone the other way 5 points 6, six points now to Holkren and uh, the margins there is getting difficult 7 points they got their 3 point shooters on both Radliff and Bruton are out on the court there's one of them. Find it. Simmons with a big rebound. Holtman all alone, and that could be the sealer. The crowd has gone a bit still now, Gary. Yeah, and me as well. 128, the Coburg Giants. 119, the Brisbane Bullets. Three minutes and 19 seconds and nine points down. It's going to have to be a great effort from the Brisbane Bullets. Well, they've got the three-point shooters to contact lens. I saw this before in a game about eight or nine years ago. Oh, ref, stop the game. Finally said, oh, here, it was caught on my uh, my jumper, you know, and put it back <laughs> in my eye. <laughs> and maybe that's the Coburg Giant secret weapon. They've got a little computer constantly built into their eyes now. Well, I tell you, they may not have computer eyes, but they've got downrange target. Target shooting in this game really has been impressive. 
Logan, four for five this quarter alone. Bullet, seven for 12 from the three-point line. That's 53%. Why shoot anything else? Radliff, three for four from the line. The risk goes on. The rebound, 37 to Coburg, isn't it? And the Johnson are now 36 rebounds. Big turn the last time we looked at that statistic. Swish. Ron Radliff, 18. 120 plays, 128. And for the Bullets, there's no, no question about that. Three minutes and 16 seconds left. Good coaching move. Picking up the pace. Full court press. Shook loose the ball. Bruton's going to try and find a way. He traveled. He traveled. Just tried to do a bit too much, but it's a good coaching maneuver. Cobras try, will probably go a little bit negative. They shouldn't, but it's inescapable that they will. They'll try and nurse this lead along. You press them up, you can put them on a bit more pressure. Nothing lost at all because I doubt if the Cobra will be overly aggressive trying to get a quick shot off. Peter Blight stepping out of bounds. There's another mistake. So the pressure's come up with two turnovers, but the minutes and 53 seconds left. Cal Bruton bringing the ball up for the Bullets. The Bullets seven points behind the draw. To Cal Bruton inside to Robert Sibley. He'll drive for the basket. That does not drop. The Coburg Giants come away with the ball. There's the pressure from Cal Bruton. It's a good move by Sibley. Of course, Simmons had the... That's a travel too. Simmons on four fouls, so... Uh, Sibley wasn't too concerned that Simmons would chase after that shot. Two and a half minutes to go. I'm sure they're hoping that they could do it. Oh, air ball, Cal. The defense got a hand to that as it left Cal Bruton's hand. It was never going to go in. He's going to drive all the way. Thanks very much. Oh, that was a courageous shot. There's nobody else there, nothing else to lose. Yeah, but it ended up being not all that easy a shot. You wonder why the heck they would take it. The final quarter has just two minutes and 11 seconds left in it, and the score line reads 130 to the Coburg Giants and 121 to the Brisbane Cliff. left. That is a timeout called, and Brian Phil will be laying the law down in this last time out of the game. Yes, well, obviously it's all or nothing for the Bullets. They can't even... They can, they can hardly they can hardly throw in, uh, allow the Giants to get the ball on the court. So Brian Curl would have been picking up, uh, telling his players to pick up the Cobra men all over the floor, and they really off court because every time they do, Cobra can take 20 seconds out. The team foul situation is such that uh, that uh, Brisbane really can't afford to foul, and they've got five team fouls, so it's going to be a tough road for the Bullets, but it's not impossible yet. Let's see what the Brisbane Bullets are made of. Willie Simmons down, and the Coburg Giants come back up the court. That's what I was White saying. Carroll. They've got to put more pressure on that this stage. Hulkra is confident now. He was four for four. I would not have taken that shot. I would be... Burning seconds. That gives the bullets back in. Simply gets the basket. 12 points to him. No reason for that shot. Use 25 seconds before the shot goes up. Cobra Johns bring it. One shot again. However, in that case, <laughs> that's, that's a bit different. That's right. There's no margin for error when you do it that way. Here it is again. 28 Simmons points. And that was, that was tough. Chris McBeat off the ground. So that's still a McGraw now. Fair sort of a jump. That's a great jump. But he, you know, he's got a good head start with his height and the length of his arm, but he really can't spring. He's got good agility. And that's the ball game for Chris McGraw. Now he goes out on fouls. And John Dorge, we haven't seen much of him after the first quarter. Really, Simmons on the line, a chance to make a three-point play. He's eight for eight already from the line. I fear the worst for the Brisbane Bullets. 132 to the Giants, 123. That doesn't help for the Bullets. That's, that's better than a score, getting the ball back. The experienced man of the team. Wayne Carroll creaming. That time he had a good piece of the ball. Interesting here. Do you take the one on one or you take the ball from the side and try for three three-point shots? I think you have to take the ball from the side. You need more than just the two points. But it's a very courageous one, uh, Coach, I think, that would make that decision. However, I think that with a minute and ten seconds to go, the chances are you're going to get a... So you might as well take the free ones while they're there for the taking. Well, that's true. It just depends on whether you feel that the only way you can win the game is to shoot three-pointers. 
Well, of course, what you can do is put the first one in, put the second one on off the ring, the other side of Willie's head, and try to get a four-pointer. Exactly. And then get fouled in the process and turn it into a five-pointer. Let's see. Well, that's as good. Well, my plan's working well. Yeah, that's right. 20 points now to Ron Radley. Take it off the right side of the ring. Robert Sibley gets it and puts it out. No, no, no. That was a good idea, Wallace. 21 points. They've got to get the ball back now. Pressure up the court. They can afford... They just almost ha they have to foul whether they get the ball or not. They have to take a gamble. They have to put two men on the ball all the time. Double team all over the court. They've got to shake the ball loose. Fouls now are incidental. There it is again. <laughs> Three seconds called on Willie Simmons. <laughs> nice shot, though. Step out. Ronnie Radliff. 23 nice points. shot, but I think it's too late. 49 seconds to go. Oh, Leroy Logan took that ball away. Get behind the three-point line. That's going to be short. Rebounder Logan. 129 to the Brisbane Bullets. 132 to the Cobra Giants. 38 seconds left in the game, and it's not over yet. And here's... Can you believe this ball game, Bill? I can't, really. It's a, it's a suiting end to the ball game. I think that uh, Bruce Holtgren was a bit stiff there. I don't, I don't know how clean that pick that Loggins did, but it's certainly good for the fans. If the Brisbane Bullets can regain position, scoring, bring it back up the court, and go into overtime, Bill. I couldn't cope. Let's do it. Let's listen to see what Curley has to say. Ronnie stepping out. Okay, you Cal. No, I got straight through. Right. You come across. Ronnie. Brian Curl is calling for the three-point play. They've got to get the ball back first. Grizzly now in the last 30 seconds has scored six points. And all of a sudden it's back to being the ball game. Let's rock and roll and play basketball for the last 30 seconds. They'll be crowning line by 10 seconds. There it is. That's a pretty good pass at the ring. Really